Ave Maria, this is Friar Anthony uh, with the Franciscan Friars of the Immaculate, and we're here today with Sister Consolatrice. Ave Maria. You, you say it, Sister. Sister Maria Consolatrice. And uh, we're, we're joining the sisters today. They're celebrating. Um, what, what are you celebrating today, Sister? It's an anniversary of... Um, it's a Thanksgiving Mass for our being here, for the help of the benefactors that helped us to renovate this whole convent. Um, but first and foremost to Father Landry, who invited us here. So we wouldn't even have this Thanksgiving if he hadn't invited us. Um, it's basically the celebration of, in Thanksgiving to all the benefactors, the Third Order members. Um, I say, first of all, Father Landry, and of course, before that, to Our Lady, who, who has willed that we be here. Excellent. And this is... Uh... It's nice because, you know, having the, the friars and the sisters, they're both First Order Franciscans, uh, that you're only, what is it, about five minutes down the road from the friars? Yes, about five minutes. About five minutes. Uh, and this church is absolutely beautiful. How many sisters are here, uh, stationed here in New Bedford right now? Five. You have another uh, responsibility here as well. Do you want to tell us what, what's that extra duty or responsibility that you've been given uh, to take care of here in New Bedford? Um, well, Our Lady has called me to to be the vocation directress for for vocations. Okay, excellent. And we notice there are several young women um, th that are here visiting. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? A uh, group of good girls, very good. Um, they have been here since I believe um, Thursday. Well, actually, two of the girls already left early yesterday. They've been here for about a week, and they're coming just to visit the life and see how the sisters live, pray with us, eat with us, recreate, and discern their vocation. Um, some are still young, but it's good to get exposed, whether or not, even whether or not a girl may have the vocation or may feel she has the vocation. Um, without visiting, you really can't know, because this way they get to see our life, to see how we pray, um, see if they feel an attraction or not, uh, explain a little bit about the religious life so they can know and also about the other vocations, you know, the single life, married life, um, the difference between the religious life and these other vocations. And so, uh, but they're a group of good girls. Usually, anyway, the, the girls who come, um, these are all homeschooled, so they know a little bit more. They know about their faith very well, um, dressed very modestly, but not just because they came to the convent. <laughs> so it's, it's a group of good girls and... Um, it's been fun, and they'll actually, they're leaving today, so. Okay. Within the entire order, how many, um, I mean, there, there's, there tends to be, like St. Maximilian Colby said, a holy rivalry, uh, holy rivalry between uh, the Franciscan friars of the Immaculate and the Franciscan sisters of the Immaculate. And I know you're not keeping track, but we tend to look at our numbers, and then we look at your numbers. How many, how many sisters, roughly, uh, in the world do, do the sisters, Franciscan sisters of the Immaculate have right now? Well, about... Two years ago, I think they said we had about 400, so 400 and growing. And growing. They're putting, as Father Stefano would say, they're putting, they're putting us to shame. So um, uh, what, what are some of the missions that you have around the world? Do you know, can you just tell us maybe some of the countries that you're in and maybe some of the works that they're doing in these different countries? Um, well, we're in all five continents. We're in Brazil. We take care of the, um, the children from the if I'm not mistaken, they say the favelas, which is the, the really poor children. But actually, Brazil um, is one of the worst countries, morally speaking. They really have, uh, they suffer a lot. So you'll have one family, six children, six different fathers. So these poor children come from all broken families. Um, they, they've been traumatized, basically. So we take care of them. We started, if I'm not mistaken, we started taking them in the convent, the girls, but then they grew to be too many. So recently, um, through all, all through donations, um, we've had built a uh, house of charity of Padre Pio so that we can house them and take care of them. We're with them. They're, we take care of them. And um, they just, sometimes they'll join us for prayers too. Um, then also in Nigeria, Africa, we have the, we have the leprosy. And also, we take care of the children of the lepers. The children don't have leprosy, but they can't be with their parents because their parents have leprosy. So also recently, it's been built all through donations because um, we, who, for who doesn't know, we live by, unholy, uh, by holy poverty. So we live by divine providence. We don't, um, we don't have money. We live by the donations and the, the, the help of benefactors. 
So through their help, we have been able to build a very beautiful house for children. It's another house of charity of Padre Pio. That's the title of our houses that we built, that we build. And it can house 80 children. We take care of the girls. The friars take care of the boys. And um, then we take care of the, the lepers as well. And recently we saw a film, the, the, recent, the most recent film that our friars and sisters have made. And they're, they're happy. They're, they're doing well, the children. Um, we're also in Kazakhstan, which is one of our hardest missions. Um, other than the weather, uh, freezing cold in the winter and very hot in the summer. So our sisters have been working very hard, forming groups, um, bringing them the faith. Uh, the girls get married at like 13 and 14. So we're starting with the younger children to help them to get to the faith because it's really, it's really hard to get through. Well, we're all over Italy. Uh, many houses in Italy, different apostolates. The apostolate varies wherever we are, depending on, on what the work is needed because of the Marian vow that we have, which is, if I guess if you're going to sum it up, it's love without limits for Our Lady. So our apostolates also vary because we say yes to whatever Our Lady wants. So, for example, here we are in Massachusetts because the Father Landry needs us to be, he asked us to be a presence for the people, to see the religious. So that's a unique apostolate. Whereas in Indiana, it's a completely different apostolate, so it really varies. Although, for our whole institute, Friars and Sisters, it's, it's mass media, but not everywhere we can, we can do that, and that's not where we need it everywhere. So, and then we're also in um, the Holy Land, in Jerusalem, in Cana, we're in Fatima, and plus we also have the, the cloistered branch of our sisters that are in the Philippines, we also have the, the sisters from the Philippines especially. Um, and so they have a cloister in the Philippines, two in Italy, and one in England. And we're also in England. How many cloistered sisters now? Do you have first order cloistered sisters? Yes, we're um, about a little over 50 sisters have already entered into the cloister. Excellent. That's excellent. Um, the, the also, I mean, we've noticed here, we made a video and we put some of the music of the sisters on it. And it was the, some of the music that's been made there in Italy. And the people that watched that video, were they, they just wanted to know how they could get it. So that's definitely, uh, maybe could, you could tell us some of that apostolate you've been doing with sacred music. Yes, we have, uh, thanks be to God, uh, great grace of one of our sisters. Um, he really gifted her with, with music. And so she's a... Um, I don't know my terminology with music, but she already has, I don't know how many master degrees in teaching and writing music. Uh, I personally witnessed in one hour, she writes uh, a song with all the four voice parts, with all the accompaniments, and it's one of the most beautiful songs you've ever heard. So really, the, God, the Lord uh, gifted the sister. And so she she's our liturgist, basically. She studies. She's um, Not all of our sisters will go for studying. It depends on if Our Lady has that need. And if the person's able to, not all of us are able to, to, to go further on studies, nor do we have that need. In fact, um, for vocations, we, don't, we usually don't require that a person have to go to college or finish uh, because it's really not a need with the Franciscan life. It's, we're not teachers as much, although we teach catechism and we work with the children, but as far as like a fixed teaching order, we're not. So we really don't have that need of... of of college degree, but some of us have, have gone forward who, who's excelled in Latin, and that really helps for our order. As, you know, now being in your, uh, your role of taking care of vocations or, or trying to get vocations, what is it that you're looking for? If you could just sum up quickly, what is it that you're looking for um, in a young woman uh, that, that may be interested in serving the Immaculate? Well, basically, uh, it's you know, single girl, uh, women from 16 to 35. But, I mean, we've had exceptions, but that's usually the, the, the age. Um, basically, you know, it's good if the vocations will come to, to visit, you know, even if, especially, it doesn't mean that you have to think you have the vocation. You know, everyone has to discern their vocation, and it helps to go to a convent to see, do I have this vocation? Um Basically, I think a high school diploma is, is, is recommended. Um, some have finished their schooling in the convent. They've gotten their homeschoolers, so they finished like their last few months or what have you, or they got their GED, but they studied in the convent because they felt that they, they had that need. 
they, they, they already felt themselves becoming lax in the spiritual life already outside, so they, they desired to, 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 to continue within. Well, thank you, sister. And the, again, this has been Friar Anthony Saravian Maria with the Franciscan Friars of the Immaculate speaking with Sister Consolatrice uh, with the Franciscan Sisters of the Immaculate. Ave Maria, God bless you.